Hi, everybody. Welcome to my studio. This is Thomas Wickstrom from the band Therian. And we're here to talk about us today and me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight, brother. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I was out last night, so I have a little bit of a hangover, but I caused it myself. So no complaints. You're still looking good, mate. You're, you're holding yourself together pretty well. Thank you for being 55. It's okay. <laughs> 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 oh, so as you say, mate, they're in releasing a new album in the closing chapter of a trilogy with Leviathan 3 on December 15th, mate. Like, that's still more than a month away. So, like, what's this period like for you, mate? Like, the album's done, it's put to bed. Now you just got to wait for it to come out. Like, do you sort of... That waiting is boring, but it is what it is, you know? And, um, you, you know, I'm very pleased with the results. So I, I it's going to be fun to hear what people think about it, you know? And we're also preparing for going to Mexico in January. We will follow this up with a tour, of course. Yeah. So we start off in January in Mexico City with a full symphony orchestra this time. And cool. then uh, we're planning to go through Europe and maybe China, you know. Wow. Big steps. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Sounds it. <laughs> that, that's pretty, pretty funny because... To people, this would be a new record. For me, I, I already digested it. You know, so for me, it's not a new, new record anymore. Number three, you know, because yeah. I heard it so many times. So you ready to move on to the next one? <laughs> yeah, it's somewhere back here. We didn't plan that yet, though. But there will be a next one, definitely. Oh. But to, not to live out on four, though. It's going to be something new. <laughs> yeah. So did this. All up, mate, like it's been an epic journey for you over the three albums, starting with Leviathan in 2021, then Leviathan 2 in 22, and the third chapter yeah. this year. So was the experience of bringing the trilogy to life everything that you imagined it would be? No, that was not the plan from the beginning. You know, we started to write for a new album, me and Christopher. And exactly when we started, almost on the day, the, the COVID came and total lockdown, you know? Right. So I couldn't go there and he couldn't come here, you know. So let's send files forward and back, you know, like that and write like that, which works good today, actually. It's a pity we can't meet, but it, it works. And since it was a, a lockdown here in Spain, it was hysterical lockdown. You know, you could go to the supermarket once a day alone. That was it. And... Um, so there was nothing more to do, not much more to do than writing songs, you know, and work and order food for Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so we started to write, you know, and I was asking Christopher, what kind of direction do you want to go on this album, you know? And his answer was, it, it's, it's going to be good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Very vague. laughs> That's a bit vague, but Okay. <laughs> So, which resulted in, in the end, we had so many songs, you know, in different styles. Everything from, from the hardest to, to the, almost in the borderlines to pop, you know, uh, because we just wrote. And so Christopher said that, yeah, we have so many songs now, so let's not make one album, let's make three and put them out in a short period of time. That's how the story was. So the, the whole lot was pretty much written at the start and then you just separate it and release it after that? Yeah, we checked out and, and put the, the, the most commercial in theory on, commercial in sense of theory on, on the first album. And, and the second one is like more, a little bit darker, so to speak. Uh, and this third one, we, we simply go bananas, you know. It's more <laughs> progressive, it's, it's more uh, experimental. Uh, influences from different kind of things you know so yeah oh. and for me i mean that's something artists always say oh the latest album is the best we've ever done but out of these three i hold number three as a, as a favorite honestly yeah, very so then mm -hmm. like going by what you just said then like how does leviathan 3 actually conclude the journey is it just by name only or is it sort of something thematically drawn it together that it concludes it's actually it's actually Chris Chris's idea to call it Leviathan, and I actually didn't ask him why, but I don't think I mean this this trilogy could definitely be named the the, the COVID sessions, you know, but it's cooler <laughs> with Leviathan. <laughs> 
So tell us, you sort of you touched on this a little bit with the experimentation on it, mate, but tell us about Leviathan 3 from a musical point of view and, and what you were going for with it compared to the other ones. Yeah, uh, like like to write with Therion is, is very funny because there are actually no rules. There's no boundaries for what you're allowed to do. And I think that on the third one, that's, that's shown, you know. And we, we're... For example, there is a song called Duende on the album. And I was in here trying to put something together and my, my girlfriend had a had a TV on very loud. So I was like, can you please take that down a little bit? You know, I was about to say that. But then I heard that's a documentary about flamenco, you know, Spanish. Okay. And I was like, I wonder if it's possible to infuse that into a rock, a hard rock metal song. So I tried and that became this song that's called Duende on the album. It's flamenco inspired. Oh, uh, and yeah, and I, I, before I sent it to Christopher, I thought, ah, he will, he will not accept this, you know. But he was like, ah, oh, that's very cool. Let's put it on the album. So we did. So that's the fun thing in theory. And there are no rules for what you, what you are allowed, so to speak, to do. And that gives you a sense of big freedom when you write melodies and songs. You know? One of the one of the massive strengths on this album, mate, is the vocal dynamics between yourself and, and Laurie Lewis. Like, how how much work and planning goes into making sure your voices complement each other? Like, is it a it's an easy process or? Oh, pure luck! No, <laughs> <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> no I know you know we know these voices so good so i mean when we write when i write a song for example i can be writing it with a guy singing in, in my head you know or or a girl but then christopher listen and he has another point of view and i mean he started this band so i let him have the last words we don't agree all the time but you know and mostly it's because you you see it from from different directions which which i think is good but um there is some, I mean, there's a lot of harmonies and a lot of vocals going on on the record. So it's a lot of, lot of planning. You know, when you, when you put music in a, in a song and you record it, there are not unlimited of space, actually, because when you start to record too much, you will not hear certain things, you know. But uh, if you listen to a song, for example, like the Unsung Lament on this album, or Lament, I don't know how you say that, Unsung Lament. Um, it's so much layers of choirs and they are they are figured out very very uh, much before we go into the studio and do it and i also had to because i bring in other people to sing so it blends with my voice you know yeah. and uh, the studio time is limited so i have to plan it very well and to show them what to sing and, and you know so it's a pretty complex work but very funny you know it's a little bit like like a like an advanced Lego. <laughs> <laughs> does it ever like um I don't know how to put this right? Like, does it ever get frustrating? Like you know what you what you want it all to come out and sound like, but with those so many other layers there coming into it as well, everything's got to sort of fit in perfectly before it works. Like, does it get frustrating that you can't just ad lib, I guess? Well, you know the, the when you record a song, it's very seldom it comes out exactly like, like you have it in your head, at least in my ca case. But um, no, I don't think it's so frustrating, really. But there is always points in an album that you release that you go, oh, fuck, I should have done this instead. But now it's too late. So we say in Sweden, it's no idea to cry over milk that are spilt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't get you anywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like there's always so much going on musically with theory and mate like you've got the orchestral pieces there's choirs there's classical yeah. metal there's power metal there's opera like how do you find the balance in the writing and creative process to make sure that it doesn't like you said before like it doesn't drown each other out or it doesn't doesn't overpower everything else like how hard is it to find that balance uh, that, that's a good question but but it's 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 hard it's hard to answer that really we just use our ears and what we feel and hope that people will agree with us really 
but um, yeah, that that's the simple answer. But uh, and also what I said before, there are no rules for what what we are doing. If we think that this sounds cool, we will put it out and and hopefully people have the same taste as us, you know. You sort of touched on this before, too, mate. But in January, you're playing with a full symphony orchestra in, in Mexico. So tell us about yeah. that show. Like, how how big is that? Like, how big a scale is that going to be? That's going to be pretty big scale. Yeah. It's one of the biggest arenas in in Mexico, in Mexico City. <clears throat> and um, we were offered to do this. And hi, hello, how are you? This is Thomas. Hi, this is Charlotte. He's in um, Did you see my cat there. behind here? Oh, he's sleeping now. He's I always know. with me in the studio. <laughs> I, it's a cat. It's, she said, is it a cat or a dog? It's pretty big. It's, it's a cat, but it's a big cat. A big, fat cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> correct, correct. Yeah, we're, we're going to, to do that in, um, in uh, one of the biggest... Um, one of the biggest uh, halls they have for for music and sport events in in Mexico City. So it's going to be really cool, you know. And the tickets are selling good. We thought first it was too big to have it there, you know. But it seems like it's okay, you know. And yeah. um, always cool to play with a real orchestra and a real conductor, you know, the real thing. Yeah. So I can't wait. So we're going there like a little over a week to to rehearsal first with them, you know, and. So we make sure that everything sticks together. Yeah, you'd have to. You'd have yeah. to. So, as a musician, bro, like, how different is it for you to play with something like a full orchestra? You know, like, you sort of, you'd, you'd get swept up in the moment, wouldn't you? Like, it'd just be so grand. Yeah, it is. I mean, there, there are, when you play with a symphony orchestra, there are no, I mean, when we play with only the band, if something goes wrong, we can always catch up, you know. We can always improvise. But with an orchestra, if you're not there, the train leaves and you are still in the platform, you know? <laughs> I suppose, yeah, you, you know, can't I, really... I, I, Yeah, I mean, I, I've done a lot of musicals and, and also opera, you know, and there's, and when you do that, it's mostly op only an orchestra, not, not a band, you know? And then you have to, to watch this guy, you know, and understand what he means, you know? <laughs> How do you go with that? Because, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm, I'm used to it now but sometimes in the beginning it's pretty complex you know and I mean these guys they they are playing what's what's written you know they they don't care you know they just play on <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, but it's shit. fantastic some of some of these guys you know who sits in an orchestra they can read a paper and say oh what a good song this is it's, <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing you look at it and go like What's that, Norths and Crosses? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you're only just doing the one show with the orchestra, and you're like, the rest of the tour is just going to be the band. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It would be, it would be honestly too expensive, extremely expensive to take a full orchestra around. It doesn't work. And if you're going to use a, a local orchestra on every place, it, it you never know what to get. So sometimes it might be too bad you know or, or, or too different you know especially something like that with so many moving parts like you've got to have you've got to have some it, to totally with and, and the practice and every single instrument is mic'd up you know and so so yeah so unfortunately that that doesn't work oh, well. okay well that's about all i've got for you tonight thomas it's been an absolute pleasure all speaking right. mate the album leviathan three is out on december the 15th and um so what are you going to be doing next you haven't decided whether you're going to do another epic story next or it's just going to be one-off albums i don't know actually i we haven't discussed that but uh if i know christopher correct there's probably going to be something very special <laughs> but i don't know <laughs> well, let's get through this one first <laughs> absolutely i hope you like it you know i did i had to listen to it before i before we had a chat and it's um Completely different to anything I've listened to before, to be honest. But it's just um, it's 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 grand. Like it, there's, it's got atmosphere. It's got cinematics. It's got yeah. depth. It's um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'd like to listen to it a couple more times and, and let it fully digest. But um, it was yeah, what, what I heard of it the first time. It blew me away, mate. It's very well done. 
Cool. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Well, great talking to you, and thank you for having me. No worries, mate. And if you do make it to Australia, make sure you look us up in Brisbane, brother, and we'll um we'll have a couple of frothies and see if we can work on that hangover. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs>